Hello, here is the news at this hour from T Solid TV. I am Olaide Amosu. Here are some major headlines. Tescom recruitment fiscally challenged persons to get automatic employment. Federal government restates support for ECOWAS states on biodiversity action plans. And on the foreign scene, China sanctions 11 Americans in retaliation for U.S. And in the world of sports, Liverpool signed Greece defender Tamis Kaisa from Olympiakos. Now the news in details. The Oyo state government has said it will give automatic employment to all physically challenged persons who meet the requirements in the ongoing recruitment exercise of the Teaching Service Commission, TESCOM. Mr. Ayodele Adekambi, the special advisor to the government on persons living with disability, said this on Monday in Ibadan speaking with newsmen ahead of the computer-based test due to take place today at the University of Ibadan. He said the Shei Makindiak administration would continue to be magnanimous to all especially persons living with disability with a view to bringing succour to them, noting that the state government would organise its own version of NPower programme to further reduce the rate of unemployment in the state. Meanwhile, Nan recalls that some fiscally challenged persons in Iwadon has recently appealed to the federal government to convert their two-year NPower service to permanent employment. Oyo State Governor Engineer Shei Makinde has relieved the Commissioner for Works, Infrastructure and Transport, Professor Rafael Afoja, of his appointment for undisclosed reasons. The Governor, in a, late, in a letter dated August 10, 2020, and signed by the Secretary to the State Government, Mrs. Olubamiwo Adeoshu, said the termination takes immediate effect. Meanwhile, in a statement by the Chief Press Secretary to the Governor, Mr. Taiwo Adisa, quoted the letter as saying, I wish to convey the approval of His Excellency, Governor Shei Makinde, on the termination of your appointment as Honourable Commissioner with immediate effect. However, in another de development, the Governor has also approved the redeployment of two Commissioners who were asked to swap portfolios. An internal memo signed, memo signed by the SSG indicated that the Commissioner for Special Duties, Chief Bayo Lawal, has been moved to the Ministry of Local Government and Chieftaincy Affairs while his counterpart, who was manning that ministry, Honorable Fumilayo Orisha Dei, is to move to the Ministry of Special Duties, indicating that the de redeployment takes immediate effects. The federal government has pledged support to other ECOWAS member states to de develop appropriate mechanisms to strengthen enforcement of biodiversity law and mobilize means of implementation towards the developed biodiversity action plans. The Minister of Environment, Dr. Mahmoud Abubakar, made the disclosure during a two-day webinar meeting with the 15 countries of the Economic Commission of West Africa states ECOWAS in Lagos on Monday. Abubakar, in his statement, said that government would provide the required support in ensuring continuous coordination of the sub-regional consultations on biodiversity while promoting strong regional collaboration among parties towards achieving the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. He, however, explained that the livelihood of West Africans was being threatened daily due to unsustainable practices, strong biodiversity policy and laws, but weak enforcement, lack of environmental awareness, weak political will for sustaining biodiversity, conservation gains, uncoordinated sub-regional effort, among others. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has said it will approach the Supreme Court over conflicting rulings by the Court of Appeal on its powers to deregister political parties. Its National Commissioner and Chairman of Information and Voter Education, Festos Okoye, in a statement said, Faced with two conflicting judgments from the same court, the Commission is not in a position to pick and choose which one of them to obey. A panel of the Court of Appeal, led by the Court's President, Justice Monica Dongbang Mensen, held that INEC ignored due process in exercising its powers under Section 225A of the Constitution as amended. The judgment was on an appeal filed by the 22 political parties. The parties were among the 74 due registered on February 6 by INEC for not meeting necessary constitutional requirements. But in the statement, after the ruling, Okoye said that INEC 
is in receipt of the judgment of a court of appeal delivered on August 10, 2020, in an appeal filed by ACD and 22 others relating to their deregistration by the Commission. Meanwhile, in the judgment, the Court of Appeal held that the deregistration of ACD and 22 others is ultra virus the powers of the Commission and order the Commission to reinstate them. Moving on to the foreign scene, China has on Monday sanctioned 11 Americans, including Senators Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz, in retaliation for similar United States moves prompted by Beijing's crackdown in Hong Kong. Washington last week accused 11 officials of suppressing freedom and democratic processes in Hong Kong, including city leader Carrie Lam, and announced plans to freeze their United States assets. Meanwhile, it was the toughest United States action yet in response to Beijing's introduction of a sweeping and controversial new national security law for the territory. Beijing, however, said the measure was a violation of international law and grossly interferes in China's internal affairs. Foreign Ministry spoke spokesman Zhao Lijian said on Monday that China has decided to impose sanctions on some people that behaved badly on Hong Kong-related issues with Human Rights Watch Director Kenneth Roth and National Endowment for Democracy President Carl Gershman also on the list. Zhao, however, did not give details of what the sanctions would entail. Pakistan on Monday has lifted restrictions imposed to stem the spread of coronavirus despite concerns from medics that infections may increase again in the country. Secretary General for the Association of Doctors, Kassir Sajjad, says Pakistan Medical Association is surprised over the decision to open all sectors at the same time. The decision to end all restrictions and lockdowns was taken last week after a substantial decline in number of infections. Health Ministry data from Monday shows that 539 new cases and 15 deaths were reported during the last 24 hours. In total, the country has recorded 284,660 cases and confirmed 6,097 deaths, and more than 80% of people infected with the disease is said to have recovered. However, educational institutions and wedding halls will remain closed till September 15th, while all businesses and industries can operate normally, which means people can now go to cinemas, spas and beauty parlours, noting that face masks and social distancing are mandatory in public places. Sajad, who is not in support, has said that the government had taken the decision in a haste and feared that infections may increase again, putting pressure on the country's fragile healthcare system. Moving on to the world of sports, Premier League champions Liverpool is said to have signed Greece defender Kostas Timikas from Olympiakos for a reported fee of $15 million on Monday. Timikas, who has agreed on a five-year contract with Liverpool and is expected to provide backup for first-choice left-back Andy Robertson at Anfield. Red Sports' Jürgen Klopp moved for the 24-year-old after opting not to pay Norwich's asking price for their Northern Ireland left-back Jamal Lewis. Thomas Goss in his statement said he is very happy and proud to be in the team, saying his aim is to achieve goals, the league again and the Champions League. He is said to have played 27 times in the league last season, winning the first major honour of his career as Olympiakos clinched the Greek title and has made 86 appearances for Olympiakos in all competitions, also had loan spells with Danish club Ischberg and Dutch team William II. Serena Williams is set to have returned to competition this week in Lexington as she ramps up her bid for a record equally in 24th Grand Slam singles title in New York next month. But otherwise, tennis has little else to shout about. The decision to go ahead with tournaments in the United States, despite the coronavirus pandemic still being in full flow there, has caused consternation among many players, with pullouts happening almost daily. The hard court tournaments are reported to be played without fans. Meanwhile, it be, it's been reported that Flushing Meadows reigning champion Rafael Nadal and women's number one Ash Barty are the most high profile names to say they will not head to New York for the Cincinnati tournament rearranged for the Big Apple from August 21st, followed by the US Open from August 31st. Williams, who's 38, is willing to take a risk, saying she is traveling around with 50 masks. 
With that, we've come to the end of the news, a recap of the headlines. Tescon recruitment fiscally challenged persons to get automatic employment. Federal government restates support for ECOWAS states on biodiversity action plans. And on the foreign scene, China sanctions 11 Americans in retaliation for U.S. In the war of the sports, Liverpool signed Greece defender Timmy Skas from Olympiakos. Please do not forget to always adhere to COVID-19 safety measures. The news was compiled by Mubala Padikale. I am Olaide Amosin. Good day and thank you for watching.